Inspire Me seminar, but it's, it's really related to our official release of our new mechanical engineering curriculum that starts next year. So I'm really excited to see everybody here um, and be a part of this. Uh, we we kind of think of this as the, the, not the kickoff, but the kickoff to the official part of it. We've been working on it for a couple of years, culmination of a lot of work. Um, and so we're excited to share it with you. We really are. So this is a, it's kind of a fun time. Um, all right, so I want to start with, kind of a weird place to do this, but maybe start with some acknowledgments of some people who have been involved in this process. So um, industry advisory board members, who I don't think anybody is here. If you're here, raise your hand. Oh, yeah, formally, <laughs> formally noted. <laughs> previous one, they have a couple of previous ones. Um, and some alumni, who will probably the same people will raise your hands. Uh, we've involved these people in the process as well. Um, but also the, uh, the student advisory board members, um, and I know at least, so there's, a, there's one, who else is here from student advisory board? A couple back there. Um, they've been involved in this over the years, and some of the earlier ones that have graduated and moved on, uh, they've been involved in this process as well. Um, the faculty, we're all our faculty. Yeah, yeah, they've been involved. Yeah, all right, very good. Um, and our, uh, obviously our, our staff, uh, our staff back in the back, I've uh, been very involved in this as well. Uh, Lynn Olson uh, from, from our advisory office. Uh, Griff, Griff, Allen, you know, everybody knows this. Uh, they've all been involved in this. And, and we've really done it, uh, you know, we think about this, the, the, the focus has been what, you know, we want to do this because we want to, we're doing it for students. Um, and so the people that, you know, here in this room, all of you, are the reason we do this and the reason why we're, we're talking about this today. So I just wanted to show, uh, share that with you to start with. Um, some important points, just to kind of give some, some starting points for those of you who are students. Um, so uh, there's a few things that I, you know, these are kind of in the weeds a little bit for now because we haven't shown you the curriculum, but I just want you to be thinking about some of these things. So you need to have at least 120 credits to graduate with, with a bachelor's degree. Um, you can choose the new catalog or the, or the current catalog that you're on. You don't have to go to the new one if you don't want to. So you can choose one or the other, but you do need to choose one or the other. You can't kind of do some sort of a mix of both. And we'll talk about that. Um, the, there is a new admissions process with the new catalog that's tied to the, to the catalog. So if, you, if you're, you'll be on the old admissions process or the current one, if you're in the current catalog and the new one with the new catalog, so it's kind of a, uh, it kind of goes along with the uh, catalog. Uh, we're not gonna offer the new courses. When we roll out new courses, we won't offer the, the ones that they replace at the same time. So we'll have plans and maps for you to transition into what, what the new curriculum is, using the new courses to map back into the old curriculum. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and there's also, again, we're going to essentially look at most lower division courses this coming fall, with a couple of exceptions down here. And then we also have uh, upper division ones will be rolled into the fall of 2022. So this is going to be a two-phase process of rolling it in to try to minimize disruption on the students as, as much as possible. So, so, uh, so keep that in mind. Now, this is our current curriculum map uh, that most of you have seen. Maybe not exactly in this format, but if the, the, the courses in here in this map that are with green uh, halos around them, little glows, those are the courses that have been impacted in some way or another, some, some more than others. But those are the courses that have been impacted by this change. So you can see it's a good chunk of, of what, what, you, what you normally would see in your catalog. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty uh, substantial thing. This is not something that we, uh, that we take lightly. It's a lot of work to do this and to make this plan happen. Uh, but again, we do this for, we're doing this for you because we think this is the right thing to do. The new curriculum map, and we'll come back to this a little bit later, but there, this is going to be the new one. So this was the old one, and then this was the new one. So for instance, there's a lot more design courses in the new, in the new map. Um, this, is, uh, this is all going to be related to design courses. So, so things like that, there's more, also more electives. And so that's some things that we want you to uh, be able to take advantage of in this new curriculum. Uh, and this is again. This is this is after it's all been all been implemented down in fall of 2022. All right. So those are some things that kind of give you a just give you a starting point. Think about it. Think about it. Start thinking about some of these things. But why do we change? Why do we care? Why are we making these changes? And and one of the things that I want to bring to your mind is we sort of start with a couple of quotes from Ray Kurzweil. Anybody familiar with Ray Kurzweil? Futurist. This one or two. 
people have heard me talk in other venues may have heard me mention this before, but Ray Kurzweil has some interesting quotes. And one of them is, human culture will change in the next 100 years. This is done maybe at the beginning of, uh, of the 2000s. Uh, human culture will change in the next 100 years as much as it's changed in the past 25,000 years. That's pretty scary thought, because that includes like everything that happened before like 2000 uh, in that, in that 25,000. Uh, so you know, airplanes and cars and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about more change than that by a lot in this next in this next hundred years. So you, as engineers, are the graduating class of you know what? Tw or I'm sorry, the retirement class of 2060, 2065, maybe something like that. Um, you're going to see a lot of this change. And so the things that we teach you in statics that we, maybe this class was developed in the 1950s or 40s or 50s or 60s or something like that. It's not going to be as relevant. We want to make sure we evolve to prepare you better for what this future looks like. We don't know. In fact, technology is changing so rapidly that 70% of the jobs that you will have as students haven't even been thought of yet. And this is for like 20, this is like in 2030, uh, the time frame for this. So it's really kind of a, a, a thought about how much it's changing and how we need to be able to respond as engineering education. How do we prepare for that future? How do we help you prepare for that future? It's really on all of us in this room to be able to do that in an in a, in effective way and make you relevant in the next, in this, in this century and, and then also be able to be part of the change that you're going to see around you as opposed to letting it just happen. So we kick off and in 2017 we had a, uh, a meeting where we talked we, we started thinking about a strategic plan to address these issues, and, and this is in the faculty. And we started thinking about it. We said, okay, well, we need to talk with the stakeholders. And so that's, again, the people that I mentioned earlier, the, the acknowledgments that we talked about. We also uh, reviewed a lot of different literature. Uh, we talked, we looked at other programs. We looked at national trends. What are other people doing? How can we be distinct and also address the trends? How, how can we be impactful in this, in this area? So we started with that. Those of you who teach design probably appreciate the idea of focusing on the customer. So that's, the, that's you and the, and the industries that we serve. And then what did, we, what did they say? What did they say? They think there was three big themes that they, that they came up with. They need to, our engineers need to be flexible. And our curriculum needs to uh, be flexible and allow for that. Uh, more electives, interdisciplinary courses, fewer core courses maybe, fewer, fewer like length, long lines of prereqs. Um, experiential learning opportunities. How do we get projects? Uh, more projects in the classroom. How do we get, get your hands dirty? Our bloody knuckles. How do you get bloody knuckles and start learning by doing that sort of thing? Um, instead of just sitting around, you know, working, working in theory all the time, we need to you know, make it relevant. Uh, more design courses. Uh, and then focused emphasis areas. You know, we can, mechanical engineering is really one of the broadest engineering disciplines, but there are so many little specific areas you can go into. How do we prepare you for some of those? And so some of these focus theme areas that we have um, allowing you to maybe get a little more technical rigor, but in a very specific area that you choose. And then also, maybe how do you apply those fundamentals that are the same, and whether you're in biomechanics or bridge design, you know, maybe the, the failure mechanics of a beam are the same in a bone as they might be in an I-beam. And, and so we can show you how to apply fundamentals, the fundamental theory in different ways, then maybe there's something new that happens in 50 years that you're going to be able to reapply in a new way. And so it's really important to be able to do that. Also, just engaging other disciplines. I think that's that's other thing. We, we don't want to be siloed. When you go to industry, you're going to work with people, other engineers, other, other people outside of your discipline, uh, people in business, people in arts. Uh, in other sciences, you need to be able to be versatile. All right, so looking looking at the uh, some of the surveys, this is an interesting one. So everybody knows what ASME is, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, national organization, international, I guess. Um, it's a uh, it's a group that they did a survey uh, in preparation for saying what is the what does this engineer of 2030 need to look like. And so what, is, what do you need to be in 2030? And they, they asked industry supervisors and managers this question. They asked early career engineers, maybe people that have been out for you know, five years in industry and sort of experience, like what did they know? What did they not know? Where do they struggle? 
And then also ME department heads like myself, and um, which you know I'm not sure how old that one is, but uh, we can uh, we can at least say that there's some there's some uh, agreement. If you look at across the board, that's a broad spectrum of what's what's available out there to, to understand. And so you start looking at some of the things that are really high here. What do they need more in? Practical experience is one of the top ones. Uh, engineering codes and standards, communication, overall systems perspective. Uh, problem solving and critical thinking, eh, it's kind of low, but but low for low for department heads, but look at the industry, <laughs> they think, well, you need some problem solving. Um, and, and so you kind of go down through the list there. And the ones that are the, if you if you look at the ones that are high in all three categories, you'll see that it really it really drives down to practical experience, codes and standards for systems perspective, project management, business processes, leadership. I don't know if you would have expected that. Hopefully, maybe you maybe would, maybe you would have guessed it. But uh, those are some areas that we should be at least targeting. So those are, these are considered need areas. Where do engineers need more, more work and more development as they come out of school? And so we need to try to find ways to address these, these areas. Um, and, and to some extent, some of these other areas here as well. So, so I think it's, uh, it's relevant data. So with that, we took this, uh, this three-year strategic plan to try to create this, cre this new curriculum. Mod we call it modernized, but it's a, this basically the new curriculum. Um, and we had a uh, focus on systems, design thinking, experiential learning, flexibility, and adding specific credentialing that you can obtain. And those are the things that, that, um, that sort of you can see how they came out of those original stakeholder discussions. And then we also said, well, how do we do hands-on if we don't have a place to do it? So we said, we need, a, we need a space. We need more space for all of you to be able to do things with your hands, get dirty, do the things that you, that, you know, learn by, learn by doing. Um, and so how do we do that? We had to, we had to look at this, developing the space. So hopefully everybody is familiar with the Engineering <coughs> Innovation Studio. That, that was, that's designed to, to mesh with what we have in this new curriculum such that that it's a space, if we don't have that space, you can't do hands-on for all of, all of the students that we have in the campus. So building that space up and creating it is something that we really are proud of. And so hopefully all of you have seen this. This one's probably from earlier in the fall. I think it's got, this is a little different looking now. It's a little, little bit further along, but, but it is a, uh, it's a lot more space. And it's phase two. We hope to go to phase three and build it and double it again, build it up again. So we're, we're continuing to build on this um, and, and create a space where, where you can do the design work and the, and the innovative work that you need to be successful in the future. All right, so development timeline. Um, so again, three years, let's see, now it's three years ago, we kicked off the strategic plan at a fall retreat. We had a very nice meeting, discussed that, we went through and developed guiding principles. We did some prototyping of maps, curriculum maps, and then we did uh, just in the last couple weeks ago. We had, uh, or a month ago or so, I had we, our curriculum changes were approved by the university, so that became official at that point. And then here we are today, official release of the curriculum to to the broad public. And then we started the fall with our phase one, and then we start, and then we completed with the uh, transition, put the transition in phase two. Uh, in fall of 2022. So you can see we're about halfway there. But honestly, going through this whole process and changing the curriculum from 2017 to 2022, that's what, five years? So we went, we went from, from cradle to grave in a curriculum change, almost entirely revamping the curriculum there in five years. That's a pretty fast, pretty fast uh, change. So we're, we're pretty proud that we're, that we're able to move this fast and be this agile. Um, so back to the uh, the map. So why you're here? So this is the new one. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm showing you the big picture, and we do have pamphlets that have these maps on them. We have some for uh, well overall just what what is the new curriculum. We have some that map in those maybe who are transitioning from or transferring in, um, yeah, or, and then some that maybe are in the middle of the curriculum, like your mid 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 curriculum. We, We'll talk about some of these transitions here in a bit, but um, but for now, I want to show you the overall final final implementation in fall of 2022, and then we're going to jump into a couple of specifics um, on here as well. 
And so, so one of the things we have, this is just a zoom up of that section back here, this design section here. We have more design emphasis. So whereas before you had graphics 105, or uh, uh, ME 105, which is graphics, now we have 187, and then we have uh, a seminar class like, like what we have here. We have a, a software level design, we have a junior level design, and we have two senior design, uh, very similar to what we have now, but with fewer credits, and more project focus in those senior designs. So whereas before you kind of jumped over to sophomore and junior year and landed in senior design, now you do design throughout the curriculum, which is really offers, offers opportunities to put projects in your classes into those, into those design areas. And so to not just work in theory of fluid mechanics, but you can also work in uh, doing design within that field. So which is, makes it much more tangible and real, which is that's what makes us engineers, as opposed to scientists or artists. The thing that you do something, you build something, you create. And so being able to design is important. And again, coordinating with Engineering Innovation Studio. Uh, focus on those fundamentals. I talked about the fundamentals a minute ago, but whereas before you had a thermodynamics, a fluid mechanics, a heat transfer, thermal fluid systems, now we're at thermal fluids one, thermal fluids two. And we have instead of uh, solid mechanics, or instead of uh, uh, mechanics and materials, static, we have statics and dynamics, we're eventually becoming these more generic courses down here. Engineering Mechanics 1 and 2, and then they will feed into all of these different big, uh, threads. The Solid Mechanics 1 and 2 are kind of in some ways very similar to, to the um, uh, Mechanics of Materials and Machine Design 1 courses that you might, that you might be familiar with from the old curriculum. But, like for instance in Thermal Fluids 1 and 2, in this first course here, we're going to deal with the basics of fluids and thermo and heat transfer all in, the, in one course. And the basics that all the, the redundancy of using a control volume to model the behavior of the mass flows and the, and the energy flows in various ways is going to be all in one. The basic, basic analysis is going to be here. And then you go into more 2D advanced analysis, 2D and 3D advanced analysis in the second course in all, in all of those. So it's a kind of stitching, restitching of the curriculum uh, together. <laughs> Um, so, so it's kind of a, it's, it's so in some ways there's fewer courses because we're eliminating redundancy, but it's also um, allowing us to present the material and discuss the material in a more holistic way. And I think that's the beauty of what we're doing here in, in, as well, not just the number of credits. This idea of beginner to advanced progression within each of those fields is, is really, uh, I think, very, uh, very clear. The, the reduced, reduction in credits is really about the ability to be able to open up more design credits and more fabrication credits for you and, and not have to elevate the overall number. So we have we reduce the, the core fundamentals down into some more specific areas, reorganize them a little bit, and then we're able to repurpose those credits into design areas so that you can have that experience along the way, which is really, they think it's a really good trade-off. Okay. So that's where we work. All right, uh, experiential learning. Um, it's similar to the design one, but this is the design one, same as before, but now we have just a couple of it, uh, we wanted to show, there's opportunities for experiential learning in every semester. Uh, we have, the, obviously those are not changed, those chem lab and physics lab, and then we have the, uh, the solid mechanics lab, which is basically kind of taking the place of the 245 lab that you have with material science, except it's going to be more focused on the uh, mechanic, uh, mechanical engineering subjects. In experimental methods one and two, so we're having a beginner and advanced in that as well, so that we have a bit of a progression. So you learn the basics in one, and then you progress into more advanced experimental methods in the second one. And so that's a that's a new that's a new thing. So every semester, one way or the other, you have an experiential learning opportunity. More electives. So where currently we have physics two twelve, um, we have opened that up and said maybe. You want to get a, a, a different type of experience. Maybe you're in a biomedical engineering minor, and you want to get uh, bio biology 191 instead of maybe that's more impactful to you as a student instead of having to take physics 212 and then biology 191. This allows you to put that course into this place here. Or maybe you want to focus on maybe a deeper understanding of the mathematics in some way. So you have choices here uh, to, to how you want to use that course. 
Um, and then we have now four, four electives out here, and they're a little less restrictive than the ones we had before. So we have the ability to actually align with four, four elective courses plus the science and math. You can get a certificate, and we'll show you those in a second, within the electives that you're offered in some cases. Sometimes a few of them are a little bit larger, so you might have to take another extra course to get the certificate or the minor, but, but we're trying to get it such that you can put a certificate in place within just the standard undergraduate bachelor's degree curriculum. And you'll have to go above that. Okay. Embedded systems thinking. This is the other thing, and I hopefully you remember on the, the systems idea. We have these three themed areas. We have the mechatronics theme, we have the thermal fluids, and we have the solid mechanics. And a lot of times what happens is we get in these, these courses and we start, you start thinking of problems relate, related to how it looks in a particular course. Like if you're, if you're in fluid mechanics, you talk about a wind turbine, you might think about the aerodynamics around the blade. Well, that's, a, that's good, but you know, honestly, there's also a dynamic situation, dynamic loading, there's structural implications, of how, how strong does the blade need to be, uh, how strong does the tower need to be before it blows apart. Uh, how, do you control, how do you control the system? Uh, those are... Um, as well as what materials do you use. All of them are important. You can't just look at it from one class perspective. You need a full systems perspective. That's one, of the, that's one of the areas where you're going to struggle as an engineer. If you don't have the ability to think in systems in the future, you're going to, you're going to be too siloed. So this is an opportunity to take a new class. We call it engineering systems and applications. And so we're going to take concepts from solid mechanics and mechatronics and thermal fluids, and we're going to combine them in the system, it's like a wind turbine, where you have to deal with them all at the same time, and breaking down the silos of the knowledge. It's not, it's not the courses that we have set out for you are just buckets that we put in for a semester. All the material matters all the time. Let's deal with it in that, in that way. So that's what systems is about. Uh, that's a, so that's a new course, um, kind of capstones in your senior year after you've gone through these. Um, and it's, it's really, I think, relevant for our new, uh, the new way we think about uh, engineering education. There's also a new admissions criteria. We have reduced the number of core courses required down to six. And you can see there's a couple of, some of these are like 201 is, is effectively what uh, engineering statics was, 210. And dynamics is effectively this new ME203. Uh, and there's no chemistry 111 on there. And there's uh, and there's no um, there, there's no um, maybe one, uh, yeah, graphics. What do you mean one five? So down to six, we've increased the GPA uh, a couple ticks up to two point six. But we've actually we've, we're opening up more opportunities for uh, if, if you if you struggle in a course or two, um, you, there's up to we're, we're moving that up from two to three. Um, and this is demonstrating special ed behavior that's already in there. So that's not that's not good. so hopefully everybody is uh, at least familiar with the current one, so it's a little different, but in a lot of ways it's the same. So certain things. So different, different a couple of different uh, criteria. Uh, we have new certificates. These are um, these are opportunities for new resume credentials. And these are the names, there's ten of them. There's the mechanical design certificate, mechatronics, me mechanical materials, industrial processes, HVAC building systems, thermal fluids, energy environment. Uh, medical, computational, and solid mechanics. And we anticipate adding more to these later as we go along. We've been wanting to do an aerospace one, but we haven't quite got there yet. So hopefully in another year or two, we can have an aerospace one ready. Um, they are different, slightly different from minors. Minors have to be in the same uh, catalog. So if you're graduating in the 1920 catalog, then the minor has to be in the same catalog. Or you, yeah, or you have to switch one or the other. Um, Certificates don't. They can be, you can, if you're currently graduating, you can get a certificate in a different catalog and you can still get it. It's fine. That's the, one of the reasons why we chose that path. Um, there are generally fewer credits than, um, than uh, a minor. We, we generally have them around 12. And we'll show you a couple of examples. Um, and they can, you could get a minor and a certificate if you wanted to. That's okay too. There's no, there's no reason to not overlap if you, if you prefer. Um, and again, they're designed to match up with the elective courses that we have uh, for the new curriculum. 
Um, if, you're, if you're graduating next fall, when this catalog becomes active, you're eligible. Even if you're a senior now, you're graduating in another catalog, you're eligible for a certificate. If you were a graduate from a year ago, and you got your mechanical engineering degree, and you want to have another, you add a certificate, you can come back and add a certificate if you want. Maybe take another class or two, you can do that. Um, or if you graduate and three years down the road, you want another certificate, you can come back and get another one too. And it's, so maybe it's an easier way to go than having to go through a, a completely new uh, master's program, or maybe some of the step towards a master's program. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. A couple of examples, I don't know, probably might not be able to see this. We do have a pamphlet that has all the certificates with all of the degree uh, requirements cut out um, for your uh, back on the back table back there. Is that right, Justin? Yep. Okay. So, so if you're interested in the, the complete list or about what the courses are, um, you can go to that, that flyer back there pick it up. And we'll have it on the website as well. All these flyers will be um, electronic. So we have the biomedical engineering certificate as an example. Um, this one very closely mimics the, the minor. So in theory, this is why it goes, it's a little higher. It's uh, uh, 17 to 21 credits for this one. But it's basically, uh, you can get the minor and the certificate at the same time. So you'll get a separate credential for the certificate. So the minor is kind of weird. It doesn't actually show up on your diploma. And so the certificate, this gives you something a little bit extra that you can, that you can put on your diploma and you can get those credentials. Um, another example, some of these are designed, again, for, the, for later on. And so if you look at the, um, let's see, the, the mechanical design certificate and you're a current senior, you can see that in the future, ME 424 from a fluid systems becomes an elective. It's not, gonna, it's not for the current, it's, it's a requirement for the, for the students in the current catalog um, as is 462 machine design. But in the future, those are mechanical design certificate courses that you could choose from. So you're kind of halfway there if you're just doing the required curriculum currently. So you're almost, you can almost get to that point. There's, there's a few, you add a couple of extra, um, add a couple of extra courses with electives and you're, and you're able to earn that certificate even within the, the current curriculum. So if you're a fall grad, fall 2020 grad, so you can do that. Okay? Um, lastly, before we switch into transition, um, we have this, this general overview session we have today, first one, and then we have three more coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, we have a list of these, the flyers are out there, you can see these, um, various rooms, various times, we've tried to pick them such that they don't overlap everybody's classes, but you know, that might not exactly be the case for everyone. Um, and then we have like some, some specific sessions. If you're a 2021, 2022 grad, um, we'll have a, a focus session for you, and we'll talk really uh, specific issues for you at this one. And so, same, same thing for uh, class of 2022 and 2023. We'll have those sessions available for class specific. Now, if you you can come if you're not part of that class, but you're going to have a little bit of real focused information on that class. Um, all of them will be recorded, posted on the website. So if you can't come, you can watch the video, all that good fun stuff. There are going to be, uh, depending on if it's uh, a morning one, like at 9 to 10 a.m., we're going to have uh, donuts and coffee uh, available. And if it's an evening one, we'll have some pizza. So everybody likes pizza. So we'll have that. Um, and lastly, if you can attend the sessions, and you know, you can certainly have questions beyond that, we have our faculty or our are, are hopefully well versed in this. Um, you can set up times with your advisors. Um, I know we've worked closely with Lynn Olson. She's also uh, very, very, very well aware of what's going on. Um, if you have questions, please talk to us. Please, please ask us, you know, questions. Uh, if we can answer them or help, help guide you in the right way, we'll do that. Um, and, uh, and, and, and like I said, answer those questions directly. So, um, with that. I'm going to open it up. Let's have some questions on that on the on the new curriculum. Anybody have any any thoughts on that? I will talk transition after a little bit of how it's going to transition. No button. <laughs> oh oh yeah. Uh, so the design classes for the sophomore and junior year are they like senior design with the client, the whole design process, or just projects how these two Um The the design curriculum. <coughs> Oh, oh, right. Yeah, like so. For instance, the the uh, this course and this yeah. course. 
Um, I think right now we have it in mind, and this is we're we're we're, we're pretty close to having it exactly in order. But the idea is we're going to have um, some some classroom time and then some work in the, uh, in the in the innovation studio. So some of the tags that you would normally get, like through ME260, are going to be embedded in these two courses, and we're going to have. Uh, individual projects. They're not going to be sponsored, at least at this point. We have we, that could be an, an idea in the future. They're not going to be necessarily sponsored projects like senior design projects. They're going to be more projects that are uh, geared a little more uh, to that to the level of the software. So, it's going to be design related. So it could be a lot of different things that's designed. You know, basically going through the design thinking process, applying design thinking to to a problem, and then coming up with a solution, and then maybe even going to the point of view. Right. Because if they have to take, for example, anything related to groups by that time, right. how do they manage? Oh, they yeah. So you're right. That that would be something that they would have to uh, make make sure that the projects were were geared to the curriculum. Okay. Absolutely. Second. 
if you're graduating spring of 23, you said? It's kind of your target? Okay. okay, so we can look at that. I, I, well, I, I'm not sure how far out I go, but I, we can look at you as a, as a student, and, uh, as an example student. Yeah, just add, the plan is to not slow anybody. Oh, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah. ground rule, number, big high level ground rule is if, if, it, if it looks like it's impacting you and your graduation path, please come and talk to us. Talk to your advisor, come to see the chair, um, you know, basically raise that flag because we are not wanting this change to impact anybody uh, negatively in terms of your ability to progress. Now you still have to pass the courses and all that fun stuff, that's, up, that's on you guys, but then uh, being able to uh, pro progress to the curriculum, uh, this, this change has, is, we're making every effort so that it doesn't have any impact on you. Okay, no matter what you choose, you have a lot of choices. Okay. Yeah. Did I understand that correctly? Like thermo and fluids and one other class are being combined into another class. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. They're it, kind of restitched. Yeah. Is that happening for both the old calendar or old schedule and the new schedule? Um, yes. This current semester of uh, thermodynamics will be the last, and the fluid mechanics will be the last semester that they're offered. Okay. So starting in fall. Uh, we're actually offering 321 and 323. Um, we're not. We're, we're changing these courses in the fall, but we're not changing these courses in the fall. So there's so there's kind of a, a bit of a you know, there, there's reasons for it that we chose as, as far as implementation, um, but we are changing these courses here in the fall. But we do have a map. So if you're in thermal or fluids now, there's a plan for for how you can progress. Without being, you're not going to take extra credits. You're not going to be able to slow down in your credit. Work. Okay, that's our ground rule. If if something happens and that's not happening for you, let us know. Raise, raise your hand. Come in. You know, come and see us because we don't want that. That's a that's a that's a very very important point that we're trying to maintain. Okay. Did I answer that question? Yeah, you did. Okay, good. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Uh, no sorry, last yeah, no worries. Uh, okay. I saw the electives. They're pretty much similar to the electives that are available right now, but the big problem is they're not offered often. So is there any change that will happen so that electives will be more available? Is um, um, you mean like across some of the other catalog courses? Right, like the certificates that I saw, most of them are elective classes that are on the catalog currently, but they're not offered more often. So like design is currently on the catalog, but we just haven't had Right, right. Yeah, that, that one is, uh, I don't, uh, okay, yeah, so that one there, you mean? Yeah, but there's a few others. Yeah, now, so these are, so some of it's going to be dependent on, um, so, so you, know, it's, uh, you guys probably know, I mean, we, we have some, in some cases we have the ability to offer courses somewhat that's instructor dependent, um, and so what we're planning to do is the ability to, to only offer 424, say once a year instead of instead of every semester, gives us the ability to have, to put an instructor in a different course for that other semester. So because we're making some of these courses, they're moving from requirements to uh, electives. That gives us the ability to offer more electives. Does that make sense? Now, the problem is that those that, that really doesn't come into play until a couple years down the road, unfortunately, because we need to continue to teach the upper division courses like 424 through the next couple of years as, a, as an every semester requirement. Yeah, but it would be very important that the electives are more available. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, and we want that. We want that. We just, we just, we have to transition to it. But if I only have to offer 424 once a year, then that gives me a chance to have, um, uh, for 424 specifically, maybe I have to go two more often, you know. And so that, that allows us to stagger them. And we'll have to have a map and show you when they're going to be offered. So we have like a two-year rolling window that can give you like when you can find your electives. And you'll have a lot better idea instead of trying to you know, have a guess from semester to semester. So that's part of this plan. Okay, that did I answer? Good. Uh, we have one uh, available back here, and it's also going to be in the catalog. I think the catalog is not officially out re released yet, but we have the, the we have the proof from it, so we know that it's final. Um, but uh, once it's in the catalog, it'll be in the, in the catalog. But you can get a flyer as you're as you're walking out and uh, have it available. And, and it'll be 
be on the website. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, well, I don't know. When's it going to be on the website, Justin? Uh, I have a couple things that I need to tweak, but it should be up late this afternoon. Oh, okay. So your choice. Wire. <coughs> <website>. All right. <laughs> we got options. Okay. Anything else? Those are all great questions. If you come up with some. Oh, oh. I have a quick question. I was just wondering, how does this compare to other big engineering do you kind of, do you ever we did look, yes. What are they like? How is it it's, it's, it's funny that a lot of them are staying with the earlier, <coughs> the, the current curriculum. And, and I, it, it, and, you, know, you see certain institutions, like if you were to look at our, like a Rose Hulman or maybe even an MIT, places like that, you start to see the, these types of changes roll out at those institutions. But if you look at a lot of the traditional more state schools, um, including our, our, our partners up in Moscow, you know they've they've maintained the same sort of approach, and so and in fact they're at like 128, 132 credits as opposed to 122, 123. So yeah, I can address that. Yeah. So I, as Don pointed out, I'm a paid evaluator. So I see a mechanical engineering program at some of those else every year, sometimes in another country. Yeah. Um, I would say that what we're doing with the design STEM is. Um, is, is a growing trend. A lot of schools are starting to do that, so, so we're, you know, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're still on heads of curve on that one. But in terms of what we've done to make more flexibility in the electives, that is pretty unique. We're, 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 I mean, there's a recognition that schools should be doing that, but um, not many are, so we're, we're very much ahead of the curve on that. Yep. These changes are, are so, um, they're, they're, they're time consuming to think through um, and do the work of figuring out what it needs, what you want it to be, and then actually going and doing it and thinking through it. We've spent hours and hours and hours behind the scenes trying to figure out how to do this. And, and this is really like, John mentioned at one of our staff meetings, this is a once in a career opportunity for a faculty to go through this process because it doesn't happen very often and the effort in, in going into it is very substantial. So what we're trying to do is make this, bring this to the point where we're actually able to, it, that's why we're so super excited, because we have the ability to be uh, innovative. We ask you guys to be innovative. We're being innovative in education as well. And that's part of what we're doing here. We're, we're trying to step ahead. And that's why I started with those Kurtzwald quotes. It's important, I think, for us to not just talk about being innovative, but walk, but walk too. And so what you're seeing is the product of that. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope that you can tell. I'm super excited. Yeah. Don, I just quickly wanted to mention, I don't know if we want to talk about how John will be the future uh, chair for next year. He keeps talking, and I want to maybe introduce Oh, well, um, yeah, we can do that. I did. It's kind of a weird segue, but... No, we don't want anyone to do relevant. that. We're just going to that leave right now. Okay, <laughs> yes. And as John leaves, um, this is my last year as chair of uh, mechanical engineering. I've been here six years. I'm not leaving because they made me leave. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Shh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've, been, I've really enjoyed the six years. I feel like this is this in, in the Engineering Innovation Studio, uh, bringing in a lot of outstanding faculty, and, and this curriculum change have been sort of the high points of the work that I feel like I've been able to work through and do while I've been chair. And, and, and I'm really excited to have uh, John Gardner, uh, who is extremely accomplished. He and I have talked through these processes for you know throughout the whole the whole the whole the whole system, the whole process. He and I are like lockstep on exactly you know, seeing this thing the same way. Uh, he's going to be taking over in the summer and going forward with it. I have full confidence. I'm very excited. I know he's um, excited to join us as well. I joined back he's been in the faculty for for I've been chair before too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, didn't want to date too much. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so we both, you know, as you know, he's been he's been speaking um, about it as well. So he he's on board. He's here. We're not going to you're not going to notice any changes. I don't I don't see any differences in how we're going to approach this in terms of that student sentiments. Um, so so feel feel free. If I'm not around, ask John. <laughs> All right. Thanks, John. Cool. All right. Um, Oh, yeah, I guess how do you think this uh, program compares to the student for that? 
Um, the, the FE exam and the PG exam, I think, are probably um, still vestiges of an older way of looking at um, you know, the, the more traditional ones. So they're still aligned around some of the same subject, subject matter that you see um, in the current curriculum. Um, and and, it, and it'll, it'll be fine either way. I mean, both curriculums will work fine for the FE and the PG. I don't think there's any real difference. Um, what I think you'll see differently is not something that, that is, is necessarily captured as much in the FE. Which is that being innovative and you know, going forward? That, yeah, unfortunately, they don't test that. In the, <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, but they don't. So, okay. Um, so let's do real quick. Let's start with the implementation and give an example. And I'll, I'll maybe I'll use your, your class here as an example. Um, so what happens now? So again, you have to choose a current catalog or the new catalog. Uh, and again, these are sort of our guiding principles. I think it's pretty much the same thing. We're minimizing disruption. Um, and so implementation is, uh, in the first phase, these red payload courses that you see are the ones that are going to be changing. So uh, lower division over here, and then like I said, the thermal fluids courses here, and then we also have the senior, no, I'm sorry, junior design as well. So those are the courses that will change in, in fall. And then the remainder of like uh, these courses out here will, will continue to be offered. You can see these are still 41 and 43. Those are your senior design courses now. Those are going to be offered, but they will be the same courses as what we have now for the time being. Uh, that allows the students that are fairly far through the curriculum to go ahead and finish out and not have to go through the up, up roar of changing to this new curriculum and, and being, we want to make sure we're trying to be as impactful. Uh, well, impactful, but not impactful in a bad way, right? So we're trying to make sure we're making that transition work well. Um, so, you know, th these are actually out there as well. These are the core, kind of the ways that we're going to map courses in, in phase one. So, like, if you're taking, uh, took graphics 105, then, then it's going to be equivalent to, uh, from a degree requirement standpoint, to say 187. Um, the same thing with uh, thermodynamics. Um, and, uh, and, and like fluid, uh, fluid mechanics can be transferred out there. Um, we have some of that depends a little bit on the map that you're on and how you how you map it in. So uh, so the better way to do it is really looking at a degree plan. Um, and so let's see. So you said start. So when did you so graduating in 23? With me. Your second semester. Okay. So that means you're. you're just, uh, <coughs> That would be your fall of 19. Okay, so if you're fall of 19, so this will be a, a student starting in fall of 19. And then if you were staying on the current catalog, this is kind of what you would end up taking. So you would take, I don't know, you may have already taken graphics, but if you haven't, you would take graphics um, uh, 187 instead of 105, and that would be in the fall. Uh, 273 instead of 271. 201 instead of 210. Um, and so the courses in black here would be the courses that you would that you would take, and then the equivalence in the new in the in the old curriculum is what's in red. So you can see there's a fair amount of mapping back. Now, if you went to the new curriculum, then you can see that there's a, you could have uh, maybe maybe a little bit less disruption. This would be the new catalog. So 187 counts as 187. There's no adjustment required. Um, 350 you would take, which would, which would be equivalent to 301 in the new curriculum. So we would make some adjustments um, depending on which direction. So if you're on the, old, on the current catalog going forward, or if you're on the new catalog looking, looking at the courses that are going to be offered. So we have maps either way. Does that make sense, how that works? And we have these available to any student that wants, that, that needs one. You can pick and choose. Um, or look at, look at the impact that it will have on you. And we have those back there now. Is that right, Justin? Yeah. And they will also be Stay on the website. Stay, yeah. switch. Yeah. And we've got them for? We have one side has the old catalog or the current catalog, and the other side has the new catalog. So you can kind of look and say, hey, which, which, which way do I want to go? Now, you have to choose one. I mean, you don't have to, you're not like you have to choose tomorrow, but you have to choose, you need to choose a catalog, because you have to graduate under a catalog. It's kind of the way the university works. Okay. So, uh, a couple of things. One, when will the Boise State kind of degree tracker thing and student center be updated? Um, prob I, I don't know. Lynn, do you know? I don't Maybe know. Maybe by fall. Oh, well, actually, you can add all the new classes and now to degree tracker. 
Um, March 9th is the first date you can actually request to change your catalog and then or, or run a what if report and see the new catalog. Oh, yes, that's correct. correct. So I think March 9th, but degree tracker won't necessarily be up and fully functioning. But you can go in right now if you're on the old catalog and remove out ME 105 and put in ME 187. So they have all of the new courses. Well, I'm if, if, yeah, but like, if you haven't had fluids, you can remove the fluids and add in ME321. Yeah, we, it's, it's a good idea to talk with your advisor, you know, whoever that is. We're going to have a meeting too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Lynn's, Lynn's got, I think she's blocked off quite a bit of time. She's, she knows this is coming. Obviously, I, I've tried to free up a lot of my schedule and certainly for the next couple of weeks. Um, and, and so, and, and everybody kind of knows this is coming. We, we don't want you to try to have to make this decision in a vacuum. Uh, if you have questions about it that aren't answered on this, on what we did today or what, we're, what the flyers say, I, I encourage you to come and, and talk with your advisor. It's really important. Of course, the people in this room probably already know that. It's the people that aren't in the room that I'm kind of worried about. Yeah. So, I uh, also. Uh, if we want to switch to the new catalog, how would that affect somebody in my peer where we would have to take that sophomore design? Let's see, you're, which one are you? You, are, are you, you start fall of 18? Uh, yeah. Here, go back. So fall of 18, so if you're staying on the current catalog, <coughs> you don't have to take that new design course. Yeah. So you basically, the only thing you have is that 321 will count as 330. 23 counts 320 and we'll wave 331 and you're done. Assuming you, assuming you make it all the way because you have it here. Well, these are all, these are what will be offered in these years. But if you want to switch to the new catalog, it's going to be a lot more stuff going on. Yeah. See how that, see how there's all the red on here? Those are all things we have. You take this and it counts for that, you take this and it counts for that. Um, and you would, you would have to take the, uh, uh, where is it, uh, 287 and then 387. In there as well, and and you end up with 126 credits, okay, as opposed to 121. Okay, for some of those red, I can't see that. Yeah, it, we they're all on the flyers. Yeah, yeah. but but that's 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 you right there. Yeah, because you're that's uh, see so you're in you're in uh, thermo. It's very important to now. <coughs> so. I, I just barely kind of touched a little bit on the transition part. I really wanted to maintain uh, the first, this first discussion is really about what's the new curriculum. And, and so some of you won't be as impacted by it. Everybody will have opportunities for certificates. Um, but, but in some cases, it may, maybe makes more sense to stay on the current, your current path as opposed to the other, the other path. And so, um, instead of the new path. So, so that's probably the question that you need to be thinking about now. Um, and, and again, I encourage you to you know, look at this material and do not hesitate. If you have questions, please come and, and, and talk with us. Talk with the advisor. Is that for appointment? We will have, like I said, we have all these other meetings um, right here uh, coming up. And if, you know, honestly, if you, if you want another one, let us know. We'll add another one. Uh, we, we, the evening sessions are relatively easy to add. We can do that. Um, we do not want you to have a lack of information, a lack of opportunity to ask questions. So. So have a chance to think about it, mull it over, um, and, any, and you can email us, email advising me. Those are all uh, great places to go. Um, feel, feel like you, you are completely supportive of this process. We, we're not trying to make this harder. Uh, we are trying to uh, change for, for a, a good reason. So does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, Sam? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Uh, the new electives, how does that uh, work with the, the honors hall? Is there an opportunity to, rather than get a uh, certificate, actually be able to graduate without extending your degree period beyond college? Um, I'm not sure if I follow your question. Are you asking, can will the honors courses count towards the electives? Is that yes, kind of. Uh, just because uh, right now, pretty much, if you're taking mechanical engineering, there's no way you can graduate the honors college and not. We we have we have um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head 392 maybe mm -hmm. we have had honors courses count towards electives okay. uh, tech technical elective right yeah there's so the there elective. is a technical elective now that has been and Justin I am getting this from you we've updated the technical elective now and they will still be if it's 
it was an accepted technical elective, it will be an accepted technical elective. They're not completely free electives, right? Like you can't go take base making and, and call it a technical elective, unless it's already there. <laughs> but we but we encourage you if you if, if, particularly if it's something like where you're looking at the old catalog versus the catalog, um, you know, raise raise it up as an issue. I mean, we have counted those as electives in the past for technical electives, so star orange courses. To try to allow um, a path that is um, so for us to, to to get you know try to try to minimize the, the extra hurdle to get an honors degree. In engineering. I know it's hard. It's not been, it's not been good, and, and I think we we continue to look at that, and hopefully we can. Work on that issue. Yeah. Cool. So. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I noticed that some of the coursework, specifically like ME 187, solid work, um, has the amount of credits have changed. Yes. The new one. Yes. Has the course also been modified to be more to account for the change in credits, like in the amount of time you expect to spend? We are. Looking at the, this course as let's see, something like this, that's what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, we're, uh, we are going to have, it's probably be about the same amount of actual sort of sitting in class time, but it's going to be minimized. The, the lecture will be focused in a, in a smaller area, and then the rest will be considered like a workshop type, type of time. And then, and so depending on how fast you are, then maybe you finish the assignment, maybe you work through it, you get to the, you know, if you, you, in theory, you can take off but but um, the, the idea being that we're, we're trying to make sure that we're it's more of a um, hands-on type of activity okay. and same with the uh, these <coughs> five courses down here these are two credits it's really we're talking about one class period um, of say theory I hate to say theory but you know thought, thought you know, classroom activity and then a little more on the idea of projects and, and maybe that's hands-on and Studio, maybe working with design teams, those types of things, and so it's a it's a bit of a mix, more of a mixed approach to the curriculum. That's that's kind of our that's our vision for how those classes, are. and that's why we're able to reduce the credits down. Um, now this class will count as this as, a, as you know, it'll be different credits, but it'll count when your degree requirements the same. That will that won't change. I'm not sure if that was the nature of the important question or not. But. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Very cool. Anything else? Last minute question. Oh, wait, no. Let's let's end with, let's let's have another one have a chance. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, and I get right that in engineering one eighty will not have any, I guess, place in the in the new curriculum or equipments. Um, yeah, that's a that's a great great question. Let's see where's a good place. Um, all right. Yeah. So there's not an engineering one eighty here. Um, I, I can give you the backstory on that. Uh, what we have out here is this FC elective, and. Um, it's, it's been a bit of a trial for us. We, we had the requirement for um, engineering one, now 180, was 120. Um, was the, the desire, or hope was about a year, two years ago, was to get it approved as an official foundations of communication course, FC, and or, or oral communication specifically. And so that process has taken longer than we really expected, and so we uh, originally thought it was, well, it was going to be there, and, and so we added it in, and then this, this, for this curriculum, we're taking it out. And, and the idea being that in the future, we, and we hope, we keep hoping, that it will, this FC elective here will actually be the Wicked Jerry 180 course. Uh, and so that's kind of our thought process behind that. And, and I, I know it's added a lot of confusion um, and, and struggle. Um, we were trying to maintain uh, a minimal level. Uh, we, we didn't want to see this elevated course uh, credit um, requirements. That's part of part of what we uh, were doing. So that so that's kind of the backstory. So right now, it doesn't have a specific degree requirement in the new curriculum. Yeah. The new in the new curriculum is still in the old. It's not new. So if you if you took it and you're in the old curriculum, it still counts. This doesn't degree requirement. Okay. Anything else? Sam? <laughs> yeah, um, so this is a pretty specific one, and you just tell me to shut up and talk later. But um, uh, for the graphics course, uh, when it goes from three to two credits, uh, is that, I'm just interested if you thought about uh, making it primarily solid work instead of hand drafting. Um, 
Actually, I think we, we might go the other way. Yeah, there's been some talk about, um, particularly, I don't know if anybody's in it now, but um, we're talking about, are you in it now? Yeah. Are, are, is Gray your instructor? No, actually. Actually. Is Gray here? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It looked like Gray from the back. <laughs> sorry. So Gray Blueberry is, is teaching it as well. Um, the, the, the discussion is, um, what we're trying to make is oral communication for the 180 course or something like that. And then what we're looking at, we're calling it graphics communication. So different ways of, of communicating with the gra and, and graphics. And so part of that is solid mechanics. But, but there, I think as an engineer, you'll find, and particularly if you watch me and my really poor ISO drawings on the, on the, on the on the whiteboards, it's important to be able to convey yourself uh, graphically, even in a sort of a meeting room, like maybe you're having a sort of like, this is my idea, blah, 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 and draw it up on the board. I think that's, there's a relevant place for that in our current model of, of, of industry, you know. Or maybe you're on a, or maybe you're on nobility and you're sketching it out and emailing it to somebody. Uh, being able to do that effectively, I think, is a part of it. And so, uh, actually, make, maybe making it more, uh, a little more actually artistic and that we start talking about scale and perspective and, and all that kind of stuff as opposed to just purely the SOLIDWORKS model. Some people are really fast at SOLIDWORKS and they can kick out a SOLIDWORKS model in five minutes and be done with it. But, but you, if you can sketch it, you can do it in you know, 30 seconds. So being able to do that is a good way to be able to communicate as an engineer. So that's part of what we're thinking in that, in that regard. But I think down the road, a, like a, a, an industry certificate in SOLIDWORKS, like a, what is it called, certified SOLIDWORKS for yeah, that would make that would make some sense. Yeah, and I think that would be worth looking into. Little I just list. want to reemphasize that you don't want to just look at these maps and translate courses back and forth. You want to be thinking about a couple of things: your admission up or division, and the different requirements yeah. when you're picking a catalog, as well as when you're graduating, because of that change to the senior design. So if you aren't taking senior design until fall of 22 or after then you're going to need to add in that junior, uh, sophomore junior design, regardless of which catalog you're on. So those are some kind of big picture things yeah. to have in mind. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to convey, and, and those are some really good points. Uh, yeah, the catalog, choosing a catalog will also impact your admissions requirements as well. So there's a couple of things that we think about. But we are here, here to help. And I want to be conscious of your time. I know we're a little bit over. I appreciate everybody being here. I, I hopefully you can tell, I'm very super excited about this, this whole process. And I'm, I'm really proud of our faculty and our, our student advisory board and all the people who are involved in this process. And I really think this is impactful for our department, our college, and our industries that we serve. So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it.